بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Afan Siddiqui I'm from Wyoming, New Jersey specifically Wyoming, South Jersey and I will be serving as the moderator today I hope and pray that everyone is doing well staying at home safe and healthy and has enjoyed and taken a lot out of the sessions thus far On behalf of young Muslims and ICNA I'd like to welcome you all to this online symposium and to the third session of today. Q and A. Uh, this will be a shortened Q and A, so I ask all the speakers to keep their answers short, uh, as the next session is also waiting to start. <clears throat> uh, so. My first question is for Ustada Aisha Prime. Uh, so what are some tips to reduce anxiety during these tough times and how to stay proactive and motivated and not to lose hope? Hmm. So the first thing, of course, to stay to, to stay away from anxiety is you have to have the adhkar. Even if you have that fortress of the Muslim book, the adhkar that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us in the morning to say after the, in the morning and in the evening, right? But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min hami wa hazin, wa a'udhu bika min ajzi wa kasan, wa a'udhu bika min jubni wa bukhun, wa a'udhu bika min ghalabati daini wa qahru rijal. That in this, you know, in the the fortress of the Muslim and the prophetic du'as that you say in the morning, this is one of the first things that becomes important. Because subhanAllah, our attachments to our daily routines in life, naturally, our when we become detached from them, we start to feel, you know, our brains begin to feel like, well, what do I do? What do I do? There's a sense of, uh, of upset. Something's different happening. And so you need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as I, I mentioned earlier, like seek help from Allah through patience and in prayer. This is important. So that's the first thing, morning and evening afkar. The other thing is make a schedule for yourself. Be very practical in the fact that in order to, you know, make sure that things are you, that are in order, so you don't feel like, what am I going to do? What's going to happen next? Make something where you, and in that schedule, you have time for learning, yes, but also you have time for you. You have time for, you know, some exercise. You have time for some mindfulness. You have time for, you know, something that's with your, busying yourself with hands, with family. So making that schedule for the day and for the week. This is something that can help definitely as it relates to anxiety. As it relates to building hope, there are a lot of organizations, subhanAllah, that are doing really, really great work right now. I know that Penny Appeal, Islamic Relief, as well as the Islamic Center of NYU um, has a campaign, two campaigns actually that are out right now. One is to help people who are suffering um, in New York from like basically the amount of funeral cost. And so the other thing is also there are people who are struggling worse than we're struggling. We're able to log on, mashallah, I internet connections from our home, but there are people who are really struggling. They've lost their jobs, they've lost their wealth and giving charity naturally when you begin to help someone else as uh, Sheikh Saad just mentioned, that you become inspiration, right? And when you're connecting to other people that are giving hope to other people, you begin to connect yourself to that rope right and so that's another aspect is that give sadaqa also you know don't overwhelm yourself with the constant newsreel the 24-hour newsreel that's what its job is to report what's going wrong and to report the deaths and the problems you have to take a break from that and you've got to take a break from social media those two things for sure will cause your morale and your like you know your sense of peace to like sink into the gutter. So it becomes really important um, that you remove, that you limit your amount of television watching, and particularly the news, and that you limit definitely your amount of social media, right? And you know, find things that, what is it that you enjoy? What is it that you enjoy doing that you can still do from in your own home? And for Sheikh Saad, uh, what advice do you have for someone who repents but constantly falls back into committing the same sins? <clears throat> okay, uh, Bismillah. Uh, so uh, you may hear some people say that, uh, and I've heard this before as well, uh, which is a misconception that if a person uh, falls back into a sin, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept their repentance. 
And without a doubt, that is one of the tactics of the shaitan. Once again, his goal, his, his, one of his biggest goals for us is to lose hope. Because once we lose hope, it means we won't return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give up. And as I said, we just define ourselves. This is who I am. I'm just a sinful person. I'm just a bad Muslim, so on and so forth. So because a person goes back to a sin, doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept their repentance. Also, it is important to remember that as human beings, we are not perfect, that we will always make mistakes, we will always sin, and this is part of being a, a human being. And as uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you were to not commit sins, that Allah would replace you with the people who commit sins and seek Allah's forgiveness so that Allah would forgive them. And so it is important to always maintain hope, even if we are going back to a sin. And the fact that a person has this concern, and I want to give glad tidings to the person who is asking this question, that the fact that they feel that regret, that sadness over returning to a sin is a positive thing because it is return them to, 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 to question and to ask about their repentance with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that's a that's a that's a that, that is a positive thing when even after we have fallen into a sin uh, multiple times that we still feel bad about that sin because there's something uh there's something which i call negative regret um and that is from the shaitan where we feel so bad about something that we lose hope ne positive regret is when we feel bad about something and that regret leads us back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our goal is not to die in a, in a state of having no sins, never committing, being, being a perfect being. Our, our goal, inshallah ta'ala, is to die in a state of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And that is part of our humility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this applies to, to everyone, regardless of someone's knowledge, or their level, and I don't care how big of a, a sheikh or a scholar or imam or someone, doesn't matter. It applies to everyone. Every kullu bani Adam khatta, all of the children of Adam make mistakes. They all commit uh, sins. The other side point I'll mention, uh, inshallah ta'ala, just so this doesn't get left out, uh, is that it's very important that if we find ourselves uh, in a particular sin or a, or a particular habit, that, that we're having uh, a lot of difficulty leaving. Uh, it is important to go and speak to uh, a professional if we're really feeling overwhelmed. Hopefully, uh, like in, an imam or a scholar, uh, but ideally someone who is uh, a counselor, a therapist, and a scholar as well, because there are some cases uh, where a person may need professional help. Um, in cases of addiction, for example, addiction uh, is like any other illness. It needs treatment. So sometimes we find, subhanAllah, that a person keeps returning to a sin, let's just say alcohol, for example, a person keeps coming back to uh, drinking, and then they continue to repent and they continue to repent. And as I said, one of the problems is we, that a person may begin to lose hope because they keep coming back. But one of the issues may be that they may have developed an addiction. And addiction needs to be treated like other illnesses need to be treated as well. And if you're ever unsure, I always say it is better to err on the side of caution. Meaning if you're not sure if it's an addiction or if it's just our normal desires, then speak to someone who is qualified so they may, so they may be able to help you and counsel you th uh, through, this, uh, through this issue. Uh, Wallahu alam. Jazakallah khair. And for Sheikh Yasser, uh, are there any guidelines for fiqh related to use of social media? Oh man, that's a whole lecture. <laughs> now we talk about guidelines of slow social media. I mean, from a fit perspective, there is so much we could talk about over here. But uh, frankly, the most important thing is uh, the, an advice that uh, the Prophet ﷺ has given Mu'ad when he said, And that's the best plan you can ever have in your life. Three things. He says, which means stay conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. And then, if you make a mistake, follow that with a good deed, it will erase it for you. And then treat people in good manners. What does that mean? 
So the idea is wherever you are, whether you're on social media, offline, online, whether you're uh, uh, backstage or front on the stage, it doesn't really matter. You need to also be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, conscious of what you say, what you post, what you watch, what you share, what you like, what you dislike, all these things simply if just have the conscience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't need too much of a list of do and don't do. You have one thing that you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from displeasing Allah azza wa The second thing is if you couldn't do that, like if you couldn't maintain this full consciousness all the time, what's going to happen? You're going to make mistakes. Like Sheikh Saad mentioned earlier, you know, we all, we all make mistakes, no matter how righteous you think you are. And even Ibn Tamir Allah when he speaks about righteousness, he goes, it's not a condition of righteousness not to make mistakes or commit sins. Mm -hmm. like, even the righteous can make mistakes. So he's, we're going to make mistakes. Then the Prophet says, well, He didn't say if you make mistakes. No, he spoke about it as a fact that you will make mistakes. Simply focus on fixing it by doing that which is good, which is right. So if it's a sin, then repent. If it's a mistake or a fault, fix it, reconcile, whatever that is. Then the last thing the Prophet ﷺ says, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقِ الْحَسَنِ If you're not that good, like if you couldn't maintain righteousness all the time, and if you couldn't, you know, uh, stay away from making mistakes, the Prophet ﷺ says, treat people in good manner. What does that mean? If you're going to make a mistake, don't hurt others. Don't hurt other people. So if you're going to be posting something or sharing something, don't be a bully online. Uh, don't be a cyber bully. Don't be that person who always just goes and throws a, a, a shame grenade on somebody, you know, just because you don't like what they post and so on. Khaliq al nasabi khuluq al hasan. Just have good manners. So again, there is a long list of details on the subject, but just to keep it summarized, inshallah, hadith al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can surprise us from any list of guidelines on social media. Three things remember. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. You're going to make mistakes, so if you make a mistake, fix it right away. Don't let it last long. And the last thing, if you're going to make a mistake, please don't hurt other people. Make it between you and Allah Azza wa Jal, but don't cause someone else to be hurt. Allah. Jazakallah. And now before I end with dua, with this session brought to you by YM, uh, I want everyone to uh, visit ikna.org slash donate and to uh, just check out the website, uh, see uh, what, what what you can connect with and to also donate as much as you can, especially during this trying time. And to also visit youngmuslims.com and ymsisters.com. And with that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum.